My husband proposed a spa trip, which was supposed to be a fun excursion for just the two of us. However, he ended up bringing along our son and his wife, with whom I had an icy relationship. He did this without even asking me. After we arrived at the hotel, my daughter-in-law said to me, you know, if you hate us that much, just sleep in the parking lot or something. She and my son continued to mock me and my husband did nothing to stop them. Finally, I lost my patience. Fine, have it your way. I'll sleep outside tonight. Goodbye. With that, I stormed out to the hotel parking lot and sat in the rental car. Eventually, I decided to go for a nighttime drive to clear my mind. I enjoyed my drive through the city until dawn when I heard the screeching sirens of ambulances and fire trucks. I restarted my phone, which I had turned off to prevent more arguments throughout the night, and instantly received a tremendous amount of incoming calls from my husband and son. Honey, where are you? What are you doing? Do you have any idea how many times I've tried calling and texting you? My husband and son were near hysterics at this point, yelling and sobbing at me over the phone about how their indoor smoking had caused a major fire commotion at the hotel. Throughout all of this, neither of them so much as offered the simplest of apologies to me. I was absolutely disgusted. So when I had a chance to speak, I asked my husband, hey, which is more important to you, me, or Eric and his wife? What? Where did that question come from? This is not the time to get into all of that. No, trust me, I get it. It's all crystal clear to me now. Eric is yours and that woman's child. Anyway, you don't care about me at all anymore. My husband and son both went dead silent, bewildered by my words. With the floor all mine, I slowly began revealing a secret. The secret that my husband and I had kept from our son until the severity moment. My name is Lucy. I'm 46 years old. My husband Ben and I have been married for 20 years. We both work for the same toy manufacturing company. We have a son, Eric, who recently married his college sweetheart, Amy. To those around us, we seem to be a normal, happy family. But everything is not as it seems. One evening when I was cooking dinner after work, I saw that my husband was in his office doing some research on the computer. Ben, what are you up to in there? Genuinely curious, I peeked into the office to see that Ben was scrolling a travel agency website. He looked back at me and said, I was just thinking that it's past time we made some travel plans. I replied, a trip? That sounds great. I squealed in excitement. You know, we're both always working, so we don't get many opportunities for a nice little vacation. I want to get out there and stretch my wings once in a while. Don't you? Yes, I absolutely do. I've been thinking the same thing. Thankfully, we were entering our company's off-season, so it was easy for the two of us to take some time off. Just thinking about the trip made me so excited. My husband was helpful around the house right after we got married, but he eventually stopped doing housework altogether, saying he was always too tired after work, so I was left to do most of it myself. Working and doing all that housework was starting to get exhausting, but a trip like this would be just what I needed to relax and blow off some steam. Most of all, I was just overjoyed that my husband, who seemed to be only interested in himself and his work, and rarely even spoke to me on some days, wanted to go on a vacation together. I've already started planning the trip and it's going great, but there is something that I'm not sure I should even tell you. Something you shouldn't tell me. Well, now I really want to know. What is it? You probably already know where this is going, don't you? It's about Eric and Amy. Upon hearing the names of my son and his wife, my smile instantly faded. Yes, that's right. My son Eric has seemed to genuinely dislike me ever since junior high. He mostly ignores me when I call out to him, and on the rare occasion that he does respond, he says, It's nothing, Mom, or don't talk to me. In the worst cases, he would say, Get back to cooking, or just give me my allowance. Sometimes he would even lock the front door of the house and put a chain on it so I couldn't get in. At first, I thought it was just a rebellious phase, you know, 
the kind that every kid goes through. But when his awful behavior continued for several years, I started to get worried and consulted my husband about it several times. However, I got the same answer every time. That's just part of being a teenager, isn't it? You were a kid once, too. You should understand. He never tried to discipline Eric, no matter how badly his behavior affected me. I really did try to understand, but no matter how many times I tried to confront Eric, his attitude or behavior never seemed to change. When he married Emmy, I wasn't invited to the wedding, nor did I receive any kind of thank you when I sent a letter of congratulations. Eventually, he brought Amy to our house to introduce us. From the moment I met her, I knew we were not compatible. With her brightly dyed hair, pierced ears, gaudy makeup, and flashy clothes, she looked about as bold as she acted. Emmy acted normally in front of my husband and Eric, but as soon as she was alone with me, she dropped the act. She sat there, staring at me, glaring. Then she said, No wonder Eric hates you. With those blunt words and a hateful expression on her face, I realized that she was actually a perfect match for Eric. As you might have guessed, they had no children and seemed to be living, let's say, freely. Even though she hated me just as much as Eric did, they came by the house pretty often. Every time they came over, they did nothing but linger around and say abusive things to me. They would often stay until dinner. Each time I would do all the meal preparation and clean up by myself. During dinner, he would always demand that I bring him additional drinks and snacks, no matter how much food was already on the table. It always hurt my feelings and made me uncomfortable. I rarely participate in conversations between the three of us, but I gave in the other day, and Amy spoke to me as if I were an idiot. Why do you still work even though you're married? She asked me. I wouldn't be able to spend hours surrounded by a bunch of old men making toys. Mind you, Emmy doesn't work because she insists on Eric providing for her, but it seems that Amy has a strong habit of slacking off and wouldn't last long even if she did find a job. I sighed as Amy happily talked about skipping work at her old part-time job. Unable to bear such selfish and arrogant behavior from the two of them, I once again asked my husband for advice, to which he said, Eric is still growing out of his rebellious phase, and maybe he is a bit troubled, but surely Emmy isn't so bad, right? Emmy treats me like a housekeeper, just like Eric does. I have a job too, and my body can't take it. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about that. There was plenty he could do about it if he wanted to, but my husband was obviously trying to avoid the conversation. Eventually, Eric and Amy stopped coming over. I don't know why exactly. Maybe they just didn't want to see me anymore, or maybe they decided they were financially stable enough not to need to depend on me for free dinner several nights a month. All I knew was that they weren't coming over anymore, and I wasn't having to deal with their arrogant behavior. However, it seemed like Ben was still meeting up with them pretty often. Sometimes Ben would come home, and I could instantly smell Amy's perfume and the cigarettes she and Eric smoked together. I have asthma, and secondhand smoke could kill me, so I always begged Eric and Amy not to smoke in the house when they came over. Even though I wished things between Eric and me could be different, as complicated a feeling as it was, I felt peace by not having to see him and his wife. Above all else, I just couldn't bear their abuse anymore. Because of this, I tried my best to persuade my husband not to bring Eric and Amy along for our vacation. Ben finally relented, and I was beyond relieved. We decided on Miami as the destination for our spa trip. I looked at the guidebook every day, bought new clothes, and waited impatiently for the day to arrive. However, I had no idea what unwelcome surprise awaited me on the first day of our spa trip. Suitcases in tow, we arrived at the airport to leave for Miami. As we made our way to the gate, my husband suddenly stopped, turned around behind me and said, There you are, you two. Hi, Lucy. I turned around at the familiar voice, and to my surprise, Eric and Amy were standing there. What? Why are you here? Didn't Dad tell you? 
We decided to tag along with you guys to Miami, Eric replied. I froze in astonishment and glared at my husband. I heard that Eric and Amy were also hoping to plan a trip to Miami, so I asked them to join us. Don't be mad. I'll make sure everyone's on their best behavior, Ben said. He knew how horribly they treated me, and he still chose to put their wishes above mine. I had worked so hard for this day. I put an extra effort into my job and even went on a diet, and now all of it was ruined. I just wanted to give up and go home. There is no use going to Miami if I was just going to be miserable the whole time. As I was about to turn around and go back the way I came, Eric and Amy stopped me. Mom, I have wanted to fix our relationship for the past 11 years, but I just didn't know how to be honest about my feelings. That's why I always acted the way I did. I also understand that I haven't always treated you fairly, but I couldn't change my attitude with the two of you always fighting, which made it hard to come over and spend time with you. You know what I mean. We don't want to complicate my relationship with you any further. I was astonished. Eric had never spoken to me like this before. It was a bit of an awkward situation for me because turning around and leaving would have made me the villain. So I had no choice but to agree with the whole arrangement and go to Miami as a family. Eric and Amy were in high spirits on the plane and ordered several drinks. My husband sat next to me, smiling ear to ear the entire plane ride. I, on the other hand, was still feeling something strange in my heart, but decided to drown it out by looking out the window and watching the clouds go by. After arriving in Miami and renting a car, our trip began with an itinerary my husband came up with on the plane. Soon after, however, Eric and Amy began talking only to my husband, as if they were totally ignoring my presence. They also harassed me at tourist spots, making me fall into a puddle and getting all wet, and forcing leftover food on me at lunch. In the midst of this disquieting atmosphere after dinner at the hotel, Eric and Amy came to our room for drinks. My husband went downstairs to grab some snacks from the hotel shop, and Eric and Amy came and sat on my bed without asking. Then Eric pulled a lighter and a pack of cigarettes from his pocket. Hey, stop it. This is a non-smoking room. What the hell, Mom? It'll get vented out. It's not a problem. I rolled my eyes and stopped him from lighting the cigarette. I then looked over and saw that Amy had just pulled out a cigarette of her own. This sent me over the edge. I lost all my patience and started yelling at them. That's enough. This is a non-smoking room. If you don't follow the rules, you're going to get us kicked out. What's up with you being so mad about everything? You know I have asthma, and you also know that smoking isn't allowed here anyway. Disregard your own mother's health if you want, but you have to follow hotel rules. You, Mom, you are way too serious. This side of you has annoyed me for so long. Smoking in a non-smoking room is beyond insane. You need to calm down. What's wrong with being a little excited on a trip and smoking a little? You know, if you hate us that much, just sleep in the parking lot or something. Amy's comment left me speechless. While I was trying to collect myself, my husband walked back in. Hey, hey, I could hear you yelling all the way down the hall. What's going on? Why are you yelling? I can't do it anymore. I can't be with these two anymore, Lucy. What's wrong? They're trying to light their cigarettes even though they know this is a non-smoking room. I begged you not to invite them so many times. Why did you let them come with us? It's unbelievable. The feelings I spent so long suppressing overflowed with tears. Eric and Amy looked at me with condescending smiles. You are so annoying, Mom. You're acting like you're better than us. You won't even take a sip of alcohol. You're not even trying to get along with us. At Eric's words, I finally felt something burn out in my heart. Fine, have it your way. I'll sleep outside tonight. Goodbye. Hey, Lucy, stop. I quickly gathered up my valuables and foam and stormed out of the room. At that moment, my husband panicked and grabbed my arm to stop me, but I shook him off. Shut up. Don't follow me. Leave me alone. With hurried steps, I left the hotel and headed for the parking lot. 
There was no sign of my husband following me. I got into the parked rental car and drove around Miami that night to clear my head. I had a bad feeling about this vacation from the moment I agreed to let Eric and Amy come with us. It turns out their feelings about me hadn't changed at all. My husband's hadn't either. Even though I tried so hard to persuade him not to, he still offered to bring Eric and Amy along without my permission. After this incident, it would be difficult for me to resume any kind of relationship with the two of them. And on top of that, there was also the secret about Ben and Eric that I was desperately trying to keep to myself. The more I thought about it, the angrier and sadder I felt, so I continued driving, trying to calm myself down. As I continued my drive through the beautiful night view of Miami Beach, I finally started to calm down. I grew exhausted from driving for so long and decided to park the rental car in a beach parking lot to take a rest. Around that time, I thought I heard sirens off in the distance, but I was too tired to care and quickly fell asleep. The next thing I knew, it was morning, and I was greeted by the beautifully glistening ocean illuminated by the sun. After having breakfast at a restaurant by the sea, everything suddenly came flooding back to me, and I took out my smartphone. I had turned my phone off when I left because I didn't want to hear my family's antagonizing voices or even read their texts. Now that I was feeling more calm and collected, I wondered what my husband and the others were up to now, so I turned it back on. I found that I had received a tremendous number of phone calls and texts since 11 p.m. last night. The number was no less than 30 or 40. Immediately after the dozens of notifications popped up, I received a phone call from my husband. Honey, where are you? What are you doing? Do you have any idea how many times I've tried calling and texting you? Ben was half yelling, half crying. What do you mean? I just had breakfast at a restaurant on the beach. What? You're seriously out enjoying a relaxing breakfast while we're in a crisis? Eric's voice was also enraged. What do you mean by crisis? I mean just as the word says. After you let the three of us had a small party with cigarettes, wine, and snacks, and before I knew it, we all fell asleep. And when I woke up, the whole room was filled with smoke. What was there a fire? That's right. From the looks of it, Eric and Amy never put out their cigarettes. It was a minor fire, but fire trucks were rushing in, and all the other people in the hotel had to be evacuated. We're being blamed for causing it. Amy got slightly burned and was taken to the hospital, and now Eric and I have to go to the police station for questioning and apologizing to the hotel staff. Oh, so that's what the sirens were about last night. My husband tried to say something else, but it was hard to understand since he and Eric were both in near hysterics. It was something along the lines of, the two of us can't leave, so can you just go to the hospital where Amy is and stay by her side until we can make it there? Without a single word of apology to me, he put his son's wife first, just like always. I was almost certain that he would never change. That is why I gave my husband one last chance and asked, Hey, which is more important to you, me, or Eric and his wife? What? Where did that question come from? This is not the time to get into all that. Well, that's all I needed to hear. Goodbye. I was truly disgusted by my husband and how easily he threw away his final chance. What do you mean goodbye? Don't act stupid at a time like this. No, trust me, I get it. It's all crystal clear to me now. Herrick is yours and that woman's child. Anyway, you don't care about me at all anymore. A what? That woman's child? What exactly do you mean? Both Ben and Eric were stunned by my words. I took a breath and slowly began to reveal the secret that my husband and I had kept from our son until this very moment. Eric, you are the child of your father and his lover. Eric was absolutely mortified by these words, and while Ben became even more flustered, I began explaining everything. Ben had a relationship with another woman many years ago. She was a subordinate at his workplace at the time. 
when I found out the lover's belly was already getting bigger and the woman cried to me, telling me that she would give me the child and begged me not to charge my husband for alimony and destroy his reputation, I thought she was the worst person to have ever lived. But at the same time, I was very distressed. The baby was too far along to be aborted, and I felt sorry for the child that she would eventually give birth to and leave at an institution. So I decided to take in the child and did not charge my husband for alimony despite his unfaithfulness. However, her workplace eventually found out about the affair and she was fired. My husband's role in the affair was also exposed, but he received less publicity because he was the one raising their child. I also decided to raise the child as my own, even though we're not related by blood. Eric's rebellion started when he was in junior high. At first, I tried to think that it was normal behavior for a teenager, but it continued through high school and even into college, and it got worse and worse every year. All this time, I knew that Eric was the child of another woman, but I could not find the right way or time to tell him. Perhaps I just didn't want him to know the truth because I was bound to him and his father out of love and had raised him as my own for so many years. When I explained all of this to Eric, he shouted over the phone in pure shock, How is this even possible? I'm the child of another woman. It's old and worn now, but there is proof. Do you want to see it? I make sure to keep it with me at all times because I know your father would destroy it if I left it at home. You're lying. You're saying you're not really my mother. I'm telling nothing but the truth. I've tried to be a real mother for so long, but I can't do it anymore. I guess we have had such a hard time getting along because your blood actually belongs to that cheating mistress of your father's. Hearing my words, Eric grew completely silent as if he had nothing to say in return. My husband broke the silence by verbally attacking me. You promised never to tell him. Maybe I did, but promises don't matter between us anymore. Just be thankful that I put up with you for 24 years. Goodbye. My husband continued to scream at me, but I hung up the phone and quickly blocked him, along with Eric and Amy for good measure. After that, I returned home after enjoying the Miami trip alone without ever going back to the hotel or hospital. I then packed up my belongings and brought everything to my parents' house, prepared the divorce papers, and sent them to my husband. Afterwards, a colleague at work told me what happened to the three people I used to consider family. He told me that the police had berated them for a long time about smoking in the non-smoking room. Then the hotel demanded a large amount of compensation from them for property endangerment and causing a disturbance. Ben, Eric, and Amy would have to somehow come up with a large sum of money on their own. Later, with the help of a lawyer hired by my parents who heard about the situation, Ben and I quickly finalized our divorce. Furthermore, word of our separation quickly spread throughout our workplace and Ben, who is not performing as well as he used to, quietly resigned. I heard that Ben was unable to find a new job, borrowed money from all kinds of acquaintances, and finally went broke. Eric's income and mental state have apparently also become unstable due to this incident. He and Amy have been arguing every day and are deeply unhappy in their marriage due to the stress of their increasingly difficult life. As for me, I found myself completely absorbed in the beach's charm, and now I go back to Miami several times a year with my parents and friends. My work life is better than ever, and my hard work is being recognized more than ever before. Without Ben around to steal my thunder, I have been appointed as manager of the accounting department.